Praise God. 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 Praise God, my brothers and sisters. So glad that you could tune in with me on this evening. Praise God. It's a blessing to have you with me. Praise God. You know, it's a blessing that we're able to come together like this through Facebook, over the internet, and share in God's word. Amen. For God is an awesome, the most wonderful, powerful God, almighty God. Amen. We just take a moment and bow our heads in prayer. Children of God, our Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Father, for blessing us and keeping us up until this very hour, O God. We pray, O God, that the Holy Spirit will sweep over our souls, speak to our hearts, Lord, and speak to our minds, O God. Take us now, Father, to higher heights and into deeper depths in Christ Jesus, God. Anoint us now, Father, with your spirit, O God. Fine-tune our ears, Lord, so that we may hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto the church, Father. We thank you, God, in all things we give your name praised. In Jesus Christ, amen, and praise God. God bless you. Amen. We're going to dive right quick into the word of God. You pray for me. Amen. Our foundational scripture will be coming from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse praise god second corinthians the fifth chapter and the 17th verse and it reads therefore if anyone is in christ jesus he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come let me read it to you from the king james therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Praise God. So we thank God for that. And, and, and tonight, I just want to, you know, share with you what's new about you. So when you think about these scriptures, what's what's new as a child of God? It said, if any man be in Christ, if any man, the new creation is is, is just that. And we read about it here in Second Corinthians says so. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. So you have to begin to think about that. How am I a new creation, or what's new about me now that I have found the Lord? You know. So so if we look at the words, you know, therefore the, the word therefore refers us back to if we look at verse fourteen and sixteen to give you this 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 description this this. Thing that God has done for us. Let me just share with you. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died, verse 15, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Verse 16, wherefore hence now, henceforth, no, we know man after the flesh, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new new creation. So, so, so now that you have found God, now that you are on the Lord's side, what is new in your life? What has changed in your life? And there has to be a change. You understand? Scripture says that people that believers have 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 died with Christ, or 
and, and and no longer live for themselves. That should be a change in that, that you have died with Christ. You're no longer about yourself, but now you live for Christ. I am his and, and he is mine. It, it, it ought to be our banner. It, it ought to be something that we wake up to every morning that I'm no longer that person yesterday that I am today. You understand? Why? Because my sins are forgiven and my sins have been washed away the old me. Now I'm walking in the newness of the of his love and in the newness of his spirit. Our, our lives are no longer worldly. We, we we live in the world. Scripture says be in the world but not of the world. I like I'm no longer trying to live. I will no longer want to live to please my flesh. But I want the things that I say and do to please God. I want God to be able to get the glory out of my life no longer worldly but spiritual but spiritual the old me has died and and, and this is the new me that's in christ jesus uh, our death is that of the old sin nature which was nailed to the cross with christ and you have to see that when he took your sins to the cross he took all of the things that 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 separated you from him all the things that 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 caused the division between you and Christ, they were nailed to the cross and they were buried with him. And just as he was raised up by the father, so are we raised up to walk in the newness of life. We're raised up with Christ Jesus. Amen. Because that old man was nailed to the cross, that, that your old outlook, your old appearance, it was nailed to the cross now that you live for Christ. And so you have to examine yourself daily. You know what I'm saying? Is is it in my speech? Is 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 it the way I I I walk now? Is 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 I see things differently than the way I I, I saw them before? I don't see the the, the the I don't see things like I used to. Praise God! I, I I'm able to hear, but I'm able to hear things with sifters on my ears. You understand what I'm saying? And so we we have to walk in the newness of life Romans 6 and 4 says we were buried therefore with him by baptism unto death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the father we too might walk in newness of life because he died for our sins he died to take away the sins of the world and now that my sins are forgiven and now that my sins have been taken away i am a new person in christ jesus i'm no longer a slave hello here i'm no longer a slave to sin that that new person that was raised up is what paul refers to in second corinthians as being a new creature or a new creation i think differently than what i did yesterday i think different i have a new mindset Praise God. I have a new mindset. I have a new way of looking at things. And we as believers have to have to be confident in knowing that, listen, it's not like I told you, keep saying, it's not like I looked at my hands, my hands look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. No, no, no. But spiritually, so these things are spiritually discerning. You have to know that within your heart, one scripture says, by the renewing of your mind in other words you can't be plagued by the spirit that when you enter a room and folk look at you or stare at you that they're talking about you praise god that 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 what were they saying before i walked in in the room you, you understand and and that just that that's just a spirit straight from the pit of hell listen <laughs> you got to understand it's not about you and if by chance you should walk in the room and folk begin to look at you first of all you need to recognize and know who you are in Christ Jesus as a child of God mm, as a child of God and the anointing of God that now rests within your heart and that now rests upon your life so that when you enter the room Praise God. You want your anointing to be felt. What anointing? The anointing of God that is now in you. The anointing of God that is now on you. Listen, you want the devil to know your name. So you want the devil to know, yes, I am here. Through and by the authority of Christ Jesus, I am here. Praise God. And, 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 and you understand, it's, it's, it's not about you. But it's, it's the mantle that you carry from God, from Christ Jesus, because now you are his. Listen, listen, now we are the sons. Behold, now we are the sons of God. 
it does not yet appear but what we shall be but when we see him we shall see him as he is why because we shall be like him i want the anointing of god to go before me so listen man because when I wake up in the morning, I want the devil to know that I'm up in the morning. A child of God up is up in the morning about to praise God, about to worship God, about to spread the good news about God. All right. So to understand the new creation, first, we must grasp that it is, in fact, a creation, something created by God, something created by God. And when we look at St. John, first chapter, verse 13, it says it like this. It says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Recreated in his likeness, in his image. New, new, new. Listen, when he made Adam, he made Adam in his likeness, in, in, in his image. He said, let us make man. He said, let us make man in our likeness and in our image. And praise God. And but, but, but because of sin, after the fall, you know, things, the relationship between God and man changed. The, the relationship between Adam and, and, and God had changed. The relationship changed. And what sin comes, sin, sin comes in and it messes things up. It distorts things. It, it changes things. From, from what is beautiful, for what is beautiful, to something nasty and dirty. And oftentimes, people don't look at sin like that, and they don't want to see sin like that. But that's what sin is. The one scripture says that all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. Praise God. You understand? So, so and the Bible says that sin stinks in the very nostrils of God. Praise God. So that when God sees us, <clears throat> he does not see our sin but he sees the blood of Jesus that covers us, the blood of Jesus, so that when he sees, he sees us through the blood of his son. Praise God. So, 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 so we need to understand that that <clears throat> that now we have been born, not 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 in a natural sense, but in a spiritual sense. So we have to think spiritually. So, so, so Saint so Saint John one thirteen tells us that this new birth was brought about by the will of God. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God does not move haphazardly. God already knows who's going to be his. Praise God. God God, God already ha ha has your name written. Praise God. And God already knows that you're going to get saved and on January 31st, um, 2012. God, God knew that you would come to him one Easter Sunday morning back, 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 back when you were a child. God knew that that through and by grandma and I'm taking you to church that that you were going to get saved. Praise God that you were going to join that Christian band, if I may say that. But like a bit of so so the renewing process, the regeneration process begins to happen once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. That you are a work in progress. You are under construction. You're no longer the same. You will be no longer saying it now i gotta understand something it does not happen overnight it's a process but the more that you spend at god's feet the more the the, the process will begin to become more and more vivid all right so we we, we need we, we we did not inherit the new nature or decide to recreate ourselves new neither did god simply clean us up or clean up our old nature he created something entirely fresh and unique the new creation is completely new brought about from nothing just as the whole universe was created by god from, from nothing only the creator could accomplish such a feat so so you need to understand that that what is going on what is going on that that when god comes in the washing Mm. One scripture says, now are ye cleansed through the word. So the, the more of the word that you read, the more of the word that you study, there's a, there's a scrubbing, there's a purifying. My God, thank you. There's a washing away of the old you. So your mind, hello here, you're not, you, you don't think in that old way. You don't think in the way that you used to. By the renewing of your mind, you, you begin to think more like Christ. You know, we, we, we laugh at the bands now because it was such a long time ago when we said, what would 
Jesus do? And I had a young lady say something to me the other day. Matter of fact, she texted me about a situation, about a problem, and she put on the text, what would Jesus do? And I laughed with him in myself, but I smiled because her, her thought went back to, in this situation, what would Jesus, how should I handle this in a Christ-like manner? And how often in, in our walk and in, 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 in our spending time with God, that things arise, that things come up, and instead of, instead of us handling, handling, handling these things in a Christ-like manner, oftentimes we revert back to the old us, to, to, to what we used to do. We want to give people a piece of our mind, want to start speaking French and cursing people all out and all those things. And, 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 and I keep telling y'all, the world is watching. And what the world want is saying is that if that's what being a Christian is all about, I don't want to have any parts of that because you're the same person that you were 10, 20 years ago. You're the same person that you was on yesterday. Praise God, but through and by the spending the prayer, through and by prayer and spending time with God, and through and by the receiving or the inward dwelling of the Holy Ghost, our old man begins to fall away. I just had a conversation with a brother about an hour ago, and he and I was talking, and the things that God has put in you, God has a way of getting that which He put in you out of you. And he said, It wasn't my intention. To, to, to speak like this or, or to or to live this kind of life. He said, because I, I didn't have any understanding about it. He said, but when I when I came to God, when I when, when I came to God, I I felt that there was more, that I needed to do more. And because he felt that he needed to do more, I said, listen, what happens is that when you begin to walk in the ways of God, when you begin to study the things of God, God purifies you, God scrubs you, and God begins to take off. That old nature, your old flesh begins to die off daily. And then there's some things in us that we're not even aware of, praise God, that, that God begins to cleanse us or purge us from, from. And we begin to look and we be like, wow, I, I didn't even know that one, I was capable of that. And two, I didn't know that was in me until I met God and he began to do a work from the inside out. Oh, that's how God works with us. He works on us from the inside out and the change is that listen and then the world begins to see the change that god has brought about in you it says old things have passed away the old refers to everything that is part of our old nature praise god hallelujah the old nature our our, our pride you know the the love of sin um the, the the things that we rely on in our flesh, our, our former opinions, our habits, our old habits, and our old passion, this begins to get that God begins to change them, and as He changes, He begins to change our life. Oftentimes, God begins to change our relationship. He begins to change our friendships. Hmm. Praise God, and, and and He does it in such a unique and special way. You understand that 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 sometimes we don't see it right away until we're putting put in a certain situation that oftentimes that our old nature would rise up, but, but, but we find ourselves in that situation, and after we've come through that trial or that test, we look at we look back and we say, "Wow, the old me would have said this, or the old me would have done that," and that lets you know that you've gained some ground or that you've gained some strength. In Christ Jesus. It's funny because the world won't forget that easy. It's funny because your friends and your family won't forget that easy because they'll remember the old you. But when it comes to Christ Jesus, when it, when, when, it, when, when it comes to having a relationship with God, you understand? He, he, he moves in such a unique way. You understand? He don't have. I keep telling y'all, he does not move haphazardly. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So oftentimes, the, when you begin to pray and desire the things of God, are you willing to stand the test? Are you willing to go through? Are you willing to do what it takes in order to become that new creation in Christ Jesus? I had started a, a, a sermon on last week that God is not looking 
for perfection, but God's looking for those that will say, here I am, God, use me. God's looking for the whomsoever will. God's looking for them, for, for people who's going to stand up and say, God, let my will become your will. God, let me say and do, Father, what is pleasing in your eyesight. He's looking for somebody to say, God, I want you to get the glory out of my life. Say that, God, I want you to get the glory out of my life. And so, we, when we, we yield ourselves over to God, and as we begin to study God's word, we, we, we find out that, in a true sense, that our ways are not his ways, and our thoughts are not his thoughts. Amen. And, and his thoughts are far above ours. You understand? And see, I, I was explaining to somebody one time is that I'm so glad that God didn't allow you to see the state that I was in prior to that God didn't allow you to see the things that I was going through God didn't allow you to see the mistakes that I made along the way because if God would allow you to to see those things then I would become a hindrance I would become a stumbling block to you and because of me you can't move on praise God and God know how to hide us in the hollow of his hands and keep us hidden until it's our time until it's time for us to come forth and shine like pure gold until it's time for us to step out in his name. You understand? Because oftentimes when, when, when we sin and mess up and folks see our mistakes, they hold those things against us. <laughs> they hold those things against us based on our human side. You understand? They, they, they don't see God working on us. They don't see they don't see the times that you've cried out and asked God to forgive you. They don't see the times that you cried out and asked God to purge you from, from, from these things. You know, the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When was the last time that you slipped, that you made a mistake in Christ Jesus and looked around to see if anybody else saw it? Hmm. They looked around and thought that somebody else was going to bring it up. Listen, that, that's just the trick of the devil. That's just the trick of the enemy. So God keeps us hidden or God will, will, will block that out. Praise God. Because sometimes I, I, when we relive in our minds our past mistakes, that holds us back, that, that grips us, that keeps us in a place that we can't go forward. Good evening, Sister Crystal, that, that, that keeps us from moving forward and God because we're being held back by our past mistakes. Amen. Or 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 or, or and now that I am in God and I've stumbled along the way, now I'm, I'm letting that beat me up side the head. The devil bringing that back to your memory say, I knew you wasn't saved. See, I knew you didn't have nothing in you. Look what you did. And then we allow that to hinder us. Listen, we're not perfect. God is not looking for perfection. But but through and by his grace, as we continue to run the race, as we continue to stay in the race, you, you'll gain strength over, over different things in your life, different things in your flesh. I always use this as an example. If you are a smoker, praise God, and you're praying that God would deliver you from smoking, or you don't want to smoke anymore because of being because of being a Christian, when should you pray? When you get the urge to have the cigarette or pray after you have the cigarette? How about both times? I'm going to tell you why. Because you feel the urge. We're not ignorant to Satan devices. So you feel the urge and the desire. I want to smoke. God give me the strength. Begin to pray God give you the strength so that you don't smoke. And that God will take away the desire. But if by chance you fall into having that cigarette. Listen. God has a list. God, God is faithful and he is just. To forgive you, hello here. That 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 temptation. God is able just to forgive you, and you pray God bless me to be stronger on the next time by taking the taste out of my mouth. You have to know where the problem lies. You have to know where the problem is, my brothers and sisters. And listen, and come out from among them. Come out from among them. You understand? And, and, and in other words. When my mother quit smoking, I, I got. When my mother quit smoking, I didn't even realize she had stopped until she pointed out. But she just quit cold turkey. She and I had a conversation about smoking, and I told her how I felt about it. 
and she had spoke for like some 40 years or more and just she prayed about it and then she said I just threw the cigarettes in the garbage and she said and every day she had an urge to smoke she would pray about it and pray about it some people turn to, to, to acupuncture and some people turn to eating more and gaining weight and some people turn to this that and the other things she says she just turned to God and begin to pray and seek after God God can and will deliver you if you would just put your trust mm, my God in him put your trust in the Lord in the Lord and believe that God is able the song says I like the song is your all is your all on the altar of sacrifice hmm what 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 if you once you put it on the altar and leave it with God put it on the altar and leave it there and I don't care what it is just put it on the altar and leave it there and trust and believe that God is able to deliver you that God is able to to make hold that God is able to make you free and and, and now is the time that you need to begin to examine some things about yourself Praise God. Now that we're having this conversation, we need to examine some things about ourselves. You understand? It, it, it does my ways please God? Is God pleased in what I say? Is God pleased in, in what I do? You understand? How I handle some things. You, and so so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, does my life line up? To the word of God, you understand? Not according to man, not not according to my opinion does not matter. My opinion does not matter, but it's between you and God. Praise God, you understand? So saying our old self has passed away. We come forth full of life and full of the glory of God. The, the newborn soul delights in the things of God and hates the things of the world and the flesh. You see, our, our purpose, our feelings, our desires and understandings, our flesh and different things. Listen, get rid of those things. God, I want you to purge me. Listen, Scripture says, purge me with hyssop and wash me whiter than snow. You see, I, uh, listen, we talk about keeping it real and being 100. Same thing when it comes to God. The way I see it is that you can't hide nothing from him anyway. He knows all. He sees all. Praise God. And, 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 and then when it comes to God, in front of God, you can be naked and not ashamed. I told y'all before, Shirley Cedar used to sing a song. I'm going to tell God, tell him all about it. I can tell God and tell him all about it. You understand? And it goes on to say, and when I tell God, he won't. Repeat it again. He won't tell nobody else. You understand? And oftentimes in our Christian world, we deal with secret sin. Secret sin. You understand? Those things that 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 hinder us, that we don't, that the world can't see, but God sees. Those things that hinder us, that we, that the world can't see, but God knows. Secret sin. Hmm. My God, those secret things that keep us bound, that we try to keep hidden from the world. But you know God sees everything. And that and, and our purpose in life should be to please God. Our purpose in our life should, should draw near unto God. The scripture says if we draw near closer to God, he'll draw near unto us. And so that should be our desire. I want to be more like Jesus. And I want to do what is pleasing in the eyesight of God. All right. We see the world differently. The Bible seems to be a new book for for a lot of people because we don't we can't get past um Jesus web. We can't get past the Lord is my shepherd. You know we read the our father our father player. We 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 familiar. We make ourselves familiar with things we've heard over time and time. But when it comes to reading the, the Word of God, studying the whole loaf, eating the whole loaf, studying the whole book, it's it's, it's unfamiliar territory because it speaks more. More than just Jesus wept. Why did Jesus cry at the tomb of Lazarus? Hmm. Why does it say that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want? Why does the book teach me that to love my enemies? You know, getting rid of that. I got to get them back spirit. I got to get them back spirit. I got 
changing of your mind. That's what it means to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. The more of the word, amen, Brother Mario, the more of the word that you read, the more of the word of God that you study, you'll find them old things falling off. Listen, when God comes in, things that are not like God can't stay. They have to go. They 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 got to get out of there. And they got to get out of there. Listen, it's like having mice in your house. You get you a cat, he'll take care of everything else. <laughs> he'll take care of everything else. So those things that are not of God have to go when you start eating or feasting on the word of God. Huh? The, the, the whole face... We, we, and we need to understand that we need to come into the realization that when it comes to being a new creature, I mean a new creation in God, because that's what you are doing by the Holy Ghost, the regeneration, is that, I told you boy, your friends, losing your friends along the way, you can get to the point where, where family members are not going to come by like they used to, they're not going to stop by, they're not going to call you like they used to, praise God, until they begin to see something new, they, they already know there's something different. Because your, 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 your conversation has changed. You understand? Your conversation has changed. So they already know that there's something different about you. If you used to be the party house that everybody used to come in and, and, and can hang out and have a good time. And now that you've become a Christian, now that you saved, and they can't come and hang out, they can come by. But they can't hang like they used to. And they can't do the things at your house like they used to. Praise God. There, there's a shift in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. There's a shift in your life. Praise God. And you begin to govern yourself accordingly. Now, when they didn't want to have nothing to do with you based on who you were, you became the black sheep of the family. Pretty soon, they begin to see the glory of the Lord, the light of the Lord shine in your life, shine in your heart. Through them by the way you talk. Through them by the way that you handle yourself. Now they're calling you for prayer. Now they're calling you, asking you, what should I do about this? What should I do about that? And, and the Bible says for every man have an answer. Some of them want to know how is it that you're able to stand in the midst of it all? <laughs> how is it that you're able to, to hold on? When all hell is breaking loose around you and you're able to share, it's not me, but it's the God I serve. It's the Christ that now lives in me. Why? Because I purpose in my heart, for him I'll live and for him I'll die. I purpose in my heart that, 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 that when trouble comes, when they, I, I begin to pray, I begin to seek God in the midst of confusion. I begin to see God. When I'm weak, he, he makes me strong. He makes me strong. Mm, hallelujah. He, you understand what I'm saying? And that's what you, we need to understand as believers. That's what we need to come into the realization and begin to tell others about God. Begin to tell others about the God we serve. Why? Especially when they begin to ask you questions as to how you're able to to handle things, how you're able to stand in a crisis. Why aren't you falling all apart? Why, why, if I was you, I'd have cursed so and so and so and so out. No, we tell them I'm praying for them. That messes people up. That messes people up. When you say, I'm praying for them. <clears throat> Listen, I'm praying for my boss right now. I'm praying for people on my job. Praise God. I, I had a conversation with a young man. The other day, God bless his soul, because they told me that he passed on this morning. Uh, and we got to call that work, but he, he works with me. He used to work with me, praise God. And he and I had a conversation, and I pulled him to the side. First, I, said, I told God, I said, God, I didn't like the way that he handled that. I didn't like the way, I didn't like what he said, God. You know, and then God just blessed me. I said, God, now give me what to say. God, just give me how to handle it the next time. And so, when he and I got together at work and he and I were alone, we had a moment, I just said, brother, what you did the other day, that, that didn't sit too well with me, that, that wasn't right, and then he said, E, what did I do, and I explained to him what he did, he said, I did that, I said, yes, you did, he said, I I'm so sorry, he said, I apologize for that. And, and, and the thing about it, that's what sin does. Sin have us doing things 
that we're not even aware that we're doing them. The devil have us so bound and so locked up that, he, that we're not even aware of what we're doing. Praise God. And the thing about it, you have to be able to make your stand. Stand. Stand for what's right. Stand for God. And I had another conversation with a young lady at work. I said, um, you doing a whole lot of swearing. She said, I am. I said, you doing a whole lot of cussing lately. No, I'm not. I said, yes. I said, when we were in the parking lot, I pointed out a few times. She said, I'm so sorry. She said, uh, she said, but I want to thank you for pointing it out to me. She said, I, I, she said, because that's not who I am. I said, something going on we need to pray about. She said, nothing I can think about right now. She said, but I thank you for praying for me. I said, definitely. Always. I said, whenever you need prayer, listen, I'm always available. And, and that's the thing that being in Christ, God gives us holy boldness. God helps us season our words. And the, with, 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 you know how to sweeten up our words. Praise God. And say, when it comes to dealing with people and, and walk and talking with people, you said, and oftentimes you'll find that a kind word will go further than a dollar in certain situations and certain um, circumstances. You understand? But you have to be willing, one, to allow the Spirit of God to come into your life and govern you accordingly, changing your mind, changing the way that you see things. Oftentimes, God bless me when I see people and when I meet people. Praise God! I one one thing I notice that that's a soul in need of a savior. They need to be saved. You understand? They need to be saved. I, I'm not gonna hold it against them. All the lies that they tell or the way they talk. Praise God! Uh, but I, and I pray that God give me a way to reach them in 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 a way and something to say to them, one to encourage them along the way or some kind of dialogue. So that they can see who Christ is in me. Who Christ is through me. Praise God. Mm, my God. You understand? And we need to share that with others. If it's nothing but the way we live our life. Oh my God. And, 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 and the way we just live our life. Ought to make the world want to walk and say. There's something different about you. You're, you're different. You're not like other people. How many times. In your life, have people noticed something different about you? Not that you was trying to be all that in a bag of chips, but because of the Spirit of God that rests on you. Hmm. Hmm. You didn't walk around there with a big banner, I'm a Christian, I'm saved. Huh? You didn't walk in there like that, but they noticed that there was something peculiar, something different about you in your mannerisms, in the way you handled yourself. Hmm? That made them want to have a conversation. I tell my wife all the time, I don't know why they think it's okay for them to gravitate to my work area and just start talking. You know what but I know that it's not me. But it's the Christ that dwells, that lives in me. And oftentimes, some, some of them are looking for an answer. Some of them are looking to engage in a conversation of one that that will encourage them, or one that will that will that will point them in another direction, or one that will give them a brand new look and a different kind of outlook on the situation. Praise God! And we, as believers, the more time that we spend with God, these things will come about. These things will come about. It does. I keep trying to tell you, it does not happen overnight all right we see the world differently the bible seems like i said a different book because we begin to go past the scriptures that jesus wept and, and, and the our father instead so and we begin to see things differently we gain strength we grow in christ when we hold on to the word, not letting anger be our guide, not not talking about people. Work, Sister Sheila, work on it. Work on it. God, listen, allow God to work on you and through you. You understand? Oftentimes, let me share this with y'all. Oftentimes during our day, when we just talk to God like we talk to one another, God, speak to me. Speak to me, God. Speak to me today, God, in a way that, 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 that I'll hear your voice and understand. You understand? And oftentimes we get we get a thought or or or, or, or a scripture come to mind or a song come to mind. Jot it down. Write it down. And go back to it later on that day 
and, and look at it. You understand? And, and, and say, okay, God, speak to me. Well, why, why would you bring it to me? And God will reveal why he gave you that thought. God will reveal why he gave you that song. Amen. You, and <clears throat> the thing about God, he knows just what we need. We don't always know what we need. We think we do. But God knows exactly what we need. And God knows how to give it to us in such a way at the time that we really need it. I'm trying to get on with the lesson. The whole face of nature seems to us to be to 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 change. Uh, and we seem to be, I'm going to get to that. And we seem to be in a new world. The heavens and the earth are filled with new wonders. And all things seem now to speak for the praise of God or the praise of his glory. There are new feelings toward all people. A new kind of love toward family and friends. A new compassion never before felt for enemies. And a new love for all mankind. And then one morning, I got up on Saturday morning. I was on my way to church. We, had, we was having a homecoming service, and I'll never forget it. And I, a beautiful summer day, and I just started walking. I said, I'm going to walk to church today. And as I began to walk to church, it just seemed like the sun was brighter. <laughs> you know, it seemed like the 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 breeze was 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 cooler. It just seemed like the trees just was dancing. I, I don't know, but you understand. But I, I was walking and praying and walking and singing. But this particular day, it just seemed like things were different, different. And I knew that it was God, and I knew that it was God. You understand? It seemed like it didn't take me to get to church no at no time, no time. God bless you. And so we, we, when when you come into a relationship with, with God, when you come to that place in God, and you allow God to deal with your heart, to deal with your mind in such a way like that, God will bless you. God will bless you. I told you in the beginning that there's higher heights and deeper levels in God in Christ Jesus. All right, the things we once loved, we 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 we, we, we detest. When it comes to our sin nature, when we used to love things, when we were in sin, we loved things before we met God. Now that we are in God, we detest those things, you understand, that are not like him. You understand, I told you, sin keeps us in darkness. Sin keeps us in bondage. Keep, sin keeps us separated from God, separated from God, but never separated from the love of God. Because while we was yet sinners, the Bible said that Christ died for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So even in your mess, God loved you, but he didn't love your mess. He loved you. That's why Christ came. That's why Christ died to get us out of that situation. Praise God. Hallelujah. To bring us up to a level, to bring us up to a place in God. Mm, that's why it's new. The sin we once held on to, we no longer desired. We don't put it away. We, we don't put it away. We no longer desire. We don't put off the old man and its deeds. Look at Colossians 3 and 9. Chapter 3. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. In other words, you ain't got to listen. You ain't got to lie. I thank God for my wife. She said, because if I said it, she said, I'm grown enough to own it. And, and listen, that's a law. That, that's what I live by now. If I said it, I, listen, I said it. Yes. I said it. You don't need me lying about it. Mm -hmm. You caught me on the carpet on it. I got to stand by what I say. I, I got to be a man of my word. You know what I'm saying? So same thing with God. You know what I'm saying? You, don't, you ain't got to tell no more lies. Get rid of them lies. Them, that lying spirit. We're going to pray about that. That lying tongue. We're going to pray about that. And put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness set apart. Wanting to do the right thing. Ephesians 4, 24 says like this. And to put on the new self, the new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Waking up knowing that who you are in Christ Jesus. Waking up refreshed every day. Now in who you are and who you belong to and your purpose for living. Hmm, you, you, you have a new outlook on life. You don't see gloom and doom, but what you see yourself walking in 
victory in Christ Jesus, knowing that whatever goes on in your life, God said, I'm going to handle it. God said, I'm going to see you through it. Yeah. God said, God said, and that's who we depend on and rely on is God. I'm, I'm, I'm just about done. I'm just about done. Praise God. He said, but what about the Christian who continues to sin? Ah, I told you about this. We talked about the earth. There is a difference between continuing to sin and continue to live in sin. Because you need to be delivered. I told you, them secret things, them secret things, the sin that holds us back, that holds us bound, that the devil keep bringing to us, bringing to us. Listen, let me tell you what my uncle told me a long time. He said, son, he said, you can't keep that bird from flying around your head. He said, but you can keep that bird from making a nest in your hair. You understand what I'm saying? So when it happens, to them, when, when it comes to those, when it comes to them as believers, you have to begin to see it the way God see it. You have to begin to rely on the power of Jesus Christ to deliver you. You have to begin to call on his name. And the Bible says, in your weaknesses, when you're strong. In your weaknesses, when you're strong. I told you the example. Pray about we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We know the difference between right and wrong. And we know what is sin and what is not sin. Why? Because we're reading the word of God. We're studying the word of God. And what the Holy Ghost does, he said, if it don't fit well with you, it's going to let you know. The Holy Ghost is going to speak. He said, nope, don't do that. Holy Spirit is going to speak. He said, ah, mm -mm. don't answer that phone. Mm -mm. Holy Spirit going to be like, mm, don't go down that street because you know they, they live on that block. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Holy Spirit going to be like, ah, don't go that way, but you go around. Take take the long, I'm sorry, baby, you got to take the long route. Why? Because he wants to strengthen you in areas, them secret places that we talked about. That secret sin that only you and him know about. Praise God. Only you and him. I don't see it, but praise be to God that he don't let folks see our weaknesses. Because that's what they will rag on. That's what they will That's what they will talk about. And y'all not strong enough because all the time folk get to talking and y'all get weak. Because y'all start hearing what they say instead of hearing what God says. And now you're ready to tell them all. Now you're ready to give a peace of mind. But you might need that. You might so you might keep that to yourself and keep it and lay it out before the Lord. No one reaches sinless perfection in this life. What happens that when we, we, we sin less, we're not sinless, we sin less in Christ Jesus. And we deal with those things on a daily basis. The purging and the cleansing that comes from God. Amen. The purging and the cleansing. It comes from God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new or become new. Praise God. And I opened it up at the beginning. What is new about you? Now that you are saved, now that you're on God's side, what's new about you? How many of us can look back and see where God has brought us from? How many of us can really sing how I got over? My soul looks back and wonder how I made it over. Praise God. God bless you. My brothers and my sisters, I thank God for you. Amen. I try to be here every Thursday, every Thursday at 6 o'clock. Join me. Keep me in prayer. Praise God as God moves us to higher heights and deeper depths in Christ Jesus. As God moves us into a new level of ministry. Praise God for you. My brother, Mr. L.L.O.P. My brother Meyer, living life on purpose. I thank God for you. Mm, purging, cleansing, deliverance. That's my mother-in-law. I love her sweet so very much. And my cousin for tuning in. I love you. Amen. You just keep us in prayer. Sister Tina, if you're still watching, God bless you. Praise God for all of you, my father's children. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen, Lord, and for what our ears have heard. We thank you, God, for your word, for we know that your word is truth. Now, Father God, I pray, O oh God, that the people that are listening, O oh God, and that will listen, 
will have a rake and a shovel ministry, O oh God. That they'll rake in what they need, O oh God, and shovel out that which they don't, O oh God. That they will take, O oh God, your word and apply it unto their life, O oh God. And after they have been strengthened, God, that they will share your word with others, O oh God. That they too may be likewise blessed. Now, Father, I thank you now. For your Holy Spirit, O oh God, speak to their heart, God. Speak to their minds, O oh God. Make whole, O oh God. Deliver, O oh God. Make free, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Deliver right now, God. In Jesus' name. God, go before them, O oh God, and give them the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, we bind mm, spirit of sickness all over the land, God. We bind rioting, this chaos, God, this confusion, Father God. We know that you have your hands on it, God. And you're moving by your spirit, God, and by your might, God. We trust and believe in you, O oh God. Mm. Hallelujah. Come now, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come now, Holy Ghost. Fall like rain. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus and bring peace. In Jesus' name. Peace. In Jesus' name. Deliverance. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We bless you, God, and we praise your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and praise God. God bless you. I love you. Until we meet again, go in peace. Amen.